and welcome to Preactcast. So this is the first screencast, and uh, today we're just going to walk through what what the hell Preact is, why you should use it, and we're going to create a simple project using the Preact CLI. So uh, Preact is basically an alternative that you have to React that uses the same ES6 API as you can see. So that means you have component in mount, you have state, you have props, you can connect it to Redux, Mawax, anything that you want, basically. It works with any React uh, ap uh, application, and it works with any React component using uh, Preact Compact, which I can Preact Compact. There we go. So like the, no. Okay. Okay, so nothing like I wrote. So it's a React compatibility layer for Preact. So basically this means that it provides the same exports as React and React DOM, meaning that you can use your build tool of choice to just drop in where React is intended. And uh, this means uh, that um, you can actually import React plugins and they will work in Preact, which is pretty amazing. So this is like three uh, KB. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how you say this in English. So this is really small. So React is 44. So this is like more than 10 times smaller. So this means that there's less JavaScript to parse, there's less JavaScript to um, execute. And uh, this is something that has been really focused on performance. So that's their, that's their, that's their model. So everything in Preact is really performance. And that is really good. Okay. So, um, okay, yeah, there you go. So adding some Preact it provides compatibility layer that enables most re complex React components to be used in your application. So this is, um, this is what? This is an example. And as you can see, this is pretty much sort of like React. So you have two things that are in React you need to do and in here you don't need to do. So one of them is the constructor. There is no need for a constructor. So you just set state to to do is equal, oh no, we're not doing a to do thing. Okay, we're going here, okay? Okay, actually no, because this one is more bigger. So to do is an empty array and text is empty. And there's a form that unsubmit adds a to do. And when you add a to do, it, from this that state is gonna get the to do's and the text. It's gonna concat that text and it's gonna set the state equal to the to do's that it has and the text equal to zero. So as you can see, there's no bind, there's no need for bind. And this amazing little thing means that you can get all the props in here. So you can set it to an empty object or null. You can get all the state here. And then you can even get the context if you need to. So if I add it to do here, so learn react, if I can type, wait, there we go. So add, this is very similar to react. And today we're gonna look at the Preact CLI. So Preact CLI is pretty amazing. And I'm not just saying this because I try to help with them. I'm saying this is pretty goddamn amazing. So it has a 100 out of 100 lighthouse score. We can actually prove this. Fully automatic code splitting for, for any rounds. Transparency code split, auto-generated service workers, uh, pattern support for an efficient loading. Uh, per, ah, yeah, the purple pattern. Zero configuration, pre-rendering server side, support for CSS modules, less, SAS stylus with auto prefixer, Mon monitor your bundle chunk size with built in tracking, automatic app mounting, and you get a productive environment that already has Preact, Preact router, and uh, loaded polyfills of fetch and promise. So, first thing you gotta do is install. So, I already have this installed, but this is what you need to install. Okay, so let's create a simple app here. So, I am gonna go with Preact Create. And um, I'm gonna create it in lesson, no, in uh, CLI. Oh yeah, I forgot one thing. Wait, so RM, RAF, CLI. So I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna do this with Yarn, otherwise my computer will just automatically freeze all to that. So you have a lot of flags here. One of them is Yarn. This is the one I use the most actually. So this is gonna create a standard project but it's gonna use Yarn to install your dependencies, so it's gonna be a lot faster, well, at least for me, because I have NPM4. Um, and uh, this will have the name of CLI. As you can see, it's already installing the dev dependencies. So here are all the things you can do. So name, directory, and package name for the app. So destination is the one that you put, so that I create the app within. So you have four templates. You actually have three templates. 
This one just doesn't support um, flags, I think. So you have the full, that's the one we're using, simple and empty. There are, yeah, there we go. So there are demos for each of them. So this is the full, this is the simple, and this is empty. So pretty standard. <laughs> so you have this to use less, SAS or stylus, git, uh, to initialize version control, but this is apparently false by default. I thought it was true. God damn it, I'm gonna have to initialize it myself. So no install means it doesn't install the dependencies, which what was what I used to do before they added the install dependencies with the ARN, which is amazing, by the way. So there we go, this is started. So I'm gonna cd into CLI. I'm gonna open this with code. Okay, so as you can see, this reminds us a little of um, React Start app, React Create app, sorry because it offers us a very clean thing to start with. So I'm gonna go yarn dev. This is gonna run preact watch. It's building all the modules. And it's building the modules and okay, there we go. So you have this. I'm gonna go to Chrome over here. And there we go. So we have a fully functional thingy right here. It's fully functional. So we can look at the manifest. So we need to set a name for the manifest, short name, but we already have this, which is pretty goddamn cool. We have the index that just imports all the styles that um, you have and import app from components.app. If we go to components, we have app and this app, oh, prettier fixes. Okay, gotta send this. So we also have the uh, option to import this async. So what you do is import H and component from Preact. I'm gonna do a video on Preact router, so don't worry about that. And we import the header. And uh, as, uh, I can show you that this is like uh, immediate changes. So I am gonna, first of all, do this. I don't know what's wrong in here. Yeah, component should, should be written as a stateless function, so let's do that, okay? So const header equals a stateless function like this. I am gonna remove all of this and I'm gonna remove all of this and uh, I am gonna export const header and that didn't work for some reason const header exp export default Jesus I swear to god I'm a programmer so I'm gonna change this to CLI demo and save and there you go it's actually pretty goddamn fast so, and you also have all your styles here. App.js just loads all of all of the routes and then it does this current this that current URL equals to the route and then it uses the React the Preact router to do all the magic. So then we have live that is empty. This is where you are put like API calls, stuff like that. You have style, that's the style.css. And you have all the routes. So first of all, let's look at profile. So home is pretty standard. So it just says home. This is this is the home component. Nothing extraordinary about this. And use the CSS modules to come here and get the home. So all the CSS is actually pretty fast at um, changing as well. So I'm gonna go here to the home and I'm gonna add a background of. How do you write badass? I think it was like this, right? Like this. I think so. Yeah, there we go. So we got a beautiful background right now. So it's pretty fucking badass. So I'm gonna go to color and set it to just white. And that's even more horrible. So you like this? This is beautiful. I'm gonna just remove both these things because it's kind of hurting my eyes right now. But I'm gonna go to profile to really show you something really cool. So. Uh, import h from component, pretty standard. So the state is equal to time date that now. So I'm gonna go to my profile, and current time is this, pretty standard. And counting cost ten, so I'm gonna change this to zero so that it's more like normal and doesn't start at ten because that's just weird. Okay, so it gets called when the route is navigated to. This is the same thing. So component did mount start a, a timer for the clock. So this that timer is equal to set interval this that update time. So basically what it does is Every second, it goes to update time. That as an error as well. This is probably just prettier. No, this is like React Sect comp composition. God damn it. So this dot set state. 
sets time to date that now. So basically this just comes here every goddamn second and updates the time. But in a really sim simple way. So you can see that there's no constructor, there's just a state, there's nothing to bind to, that what, what to me is amazing. And when you render, you have the props, and this is the user prop. So what is the user prop? So profile equals me. So if I go to John, say profile John. So this is pretty simple. There's no params. This is just, you get the user. The user comes from the URL. Exactly. So the current time, and it shows the time. And when you click the button, it goes to this, this that increment. Increment just sets the state of the count to this, that state the count plus one. And it works fine. You want to create another page, so you can just come here. And uh, I'm just going to like duplicate the home and call it awesome. So I have a page called awesome and I'm just going to write here. So welcome to the awesome page. So H1, God damn it, H1. And um, so const, <laughs> I'm sorry, const home equals, I don't need any of this. So equals this and returns this and I just remove this and ex export default home. Yeah, call it this. So this is actually not home. This is awesome. Get a capital A, man. So I actually don't need the component from Preact. I only need H. So as you can see, so uh, gzip, this is 3.5 k uh, case, so which is really not a lot. So I'm actually going to change this to awesome as well, so that you can see that it works fine. Let's change this to awesome. And in here, I'm going to put the background of badass. So background plus, there we go. So if I go to the page, it won't work. So if I go to awesome, you get nothing because I haven't created the raw yet. So let's come here to index.js. God damn it. There we go. App.js. Sorry. So now, first of all, I'm going to import my awesome page. So import awesome from back and enter routes. Awesome. I don't need the rest. So there we go. And I am going to call awesome like this. So awesome. And I'm going to set the path. Oh yeah, there was an error. So it stopped. So path is going to be equal to awesome. So you can actually just change this to be whatever you want. So we can be, this is fucking amazing. This is, that is perfectly fine. I'm going to save this and then I'm going to reload the page. And as you can see, it has welcome to the awesome page, but there's no link in the header. So let's just add a, a header link. Just gonna copy one of these links because I think that's easier and nobody deserves to like. Oh, look, pretty is amazing, man. I swear to God. So awesome. And I'm gonna write here awesome. Then I'm gonna reload the page and there you go. Okay, I was like showing this with my hand. So there you go. The awesome uh, link is active. Can you change the URL? Yeah, the only thing is you have to change it here. So let's go here to the app and say this is awesome sorry awesome huh and if I go to this link now it fucking works <laughs> I curse a lot and I'm sorry for that and this is cool again so let's run a build so yarn build we got a nice little thing and we're gonna build this okay so as you can see, all our project is 144 case for 15 resources. I'm gonna go to C. I'm gonna CD into the build. So CD build, and I'm gonna type now and upload it to now, so that we can actually get a good view of what it's going on. So it's copied to my clipboard. By the way, now is the greatest thing ever, like ever, ever since the what? Oh. Oh, God damn it. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to create a new window. I'm already locked in here, so it's just easier. <clears throat> I'm going to inspect audits and perform an audit now. Wait, let me see if there's an 
error, see no errors, and you have a service worker running, which is amazing. So perform an audit, run audit, which now should work offline. Gotta wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. I think it's almost done. There we go. So, what I think is amazing is that we, by default, this gives you 100% in progressive web app, which is incredible. So 87 in performance. Uh, this is because mainly I don't have a loading, I don't have anything, so it has a problem with first meaningful paint, but this is like 80%, 87, which is amazing because I have, yeah. Okay, so this is because you have the CSS. Like, uh, what I do with this is that I usually just start components, which is pretty good. Yeah, color contrast because this in mobile just dives, but usually it's pretty great. And it has 100 in best. So this is the default of what you have. Assuming that you're using CSS and not using style components or GSS, this is the default of what you have. And I think this is pretty goddamn amazing. So if I just wait, so let me just do something here and I'm going to show you that this is because of the text. Yeah, so this is because of the text. I'm going to remove the text. In here, I'm going to remove all of this and just leave the nav. So, And I'm going to CD back and yarn build. Okay, yarn build. So then I'm going to just CD into there and just go to CD build. So now. I'm sorry to copy my, I keep forgetting that this already copies to my clipboard. Okay, so it's syncing all the files, wait. So it's only syncing the files that are different, which in this case is pretty much all of them, because I, I ran the build. So audits. Okay, so now that we have this, I'm going to run a new audit, and I'm just going to run it with performance, because performance and accessibility. So let's do this, so run the audit. Gotta wait for it because this takes a while. As you know, we've probably already used like uh, this amazing tool by Google. Okay, so accessibility is now at 100%. So this was the main issue that we had and it was removed. So by default, performance is between 87 and 100. So probably if I run this again with just performance, it's gonna give me a different number because uh, this depends a lot on the machines and now and stuff like that. It doesn't depend so much on the code because this is just a temporary build. So this is not optimized for speed in any way. So I got 86, now I got 85, but it's a pretty good standard. So this is the first lesson, uh, which I think is actually pretty long by now. So this is the first lesson that we have. The next lesson, we're gonna start a Preact application from start and basically create a simple router, something like that. And we're gonna have some fun. So, see you guys in the next one.